In this video, we're going to take a look at vCenter alarms, and a good time to do this is right after I recorded the HA video, where I caused one of the hosts to fail and had it bring the virtual machines back up and running. Now, I've actually repaired that condition. The host that I had failed, I brought back up. We can see actually here that both of them are responding. I don't see any weirdness. But if I take a look at the cluster object, it says I have a configuration issue, that it had initiated a failover. And it's pretty much telling me right there what's going on. But you see, I do have a warning icon there, and that's represented here. Not everything will make it there, however. So when an alarm occurs, we really should go over to the alarms tab and see what's happening for it. So if I go to the cluster object, my alarms tab, and see it says there's a vSphere HA failover in progress. That's actually not true. There was an HA failover event in progress, but that's all done now. Because that's pretty serious, you probably want to investigate why that's happening. This alarm is going to stay. So what I can do is I can acknowledge the alarm and have it just kind of grayed out and it'll record the fact that I acknowledged it and, you know, it shows my username and we can reasonably assume I'm now working this problem and trying to determine what happened and determine the cause and what the impact was and whether this is something that's likely to happen again. Treat that as the incident that it is. Of course, it may come back, but at least at this point, we've acknowledged it. So that gives us a pretty good view of acknowledging and clearing an alarm, but there's many, many things that could occur in a complex vSphere environment that we probably want to be made aware of when they happen. In fact, we might even want to have the system take action for us when they happen. You'll see that we've got triggered alarms. We can also see definitions. So there's quite a few previously defined alarms within vCenter that we can attach to a cluster object in this case. And if we go over to a host and go to its alarms tab, we can see various other things that, you know, apply at the host level and go to a virtual machine. We can see that we have different types of alarms that apply to virtual machines and so on. What we may want to do is go in and define our own alarms, or we may want to customize the alarms that already exist and change how they notify us or have it take action when that occurs. So I'm going to go all the way to the root of my vCenter. Not every alarm is going to roll up to every level. This is something to be aware of. I can define alarms from the root down. But not every alarm is going to go all the way up to the root object. Good idea to keep an eye on your environment and a very good idea to set up notifications so that you do actually see them. These are not super well represented in the interface. And we also don't get that many details from these alarms when they are triggered. I mean, yeah, data store usage on disk. Okay, I've got usage on NFS01. That's fairly straightforward, of course. Let's take a look at defining our own alarms. So if I right click on the actual root of my vCenter object here, I could turn off alarm actions temporarily if I'm doing maintenance. But I'm going to go ahead and say add alarm. And you'll see that we actually have two types of alarms that we can define. Alarms that are associated to events. And when that event occurs, we're going to trigger the alarm, maybe a warning or an actual error, or also threshold-based alarms that we can specify a particular performance object. And when we go above or below it, then we notify for that. So let's take a look at the kind of things that we can do. My alarm name might be virtual machine alarm demo. I want to create an alarm for objects of the virtual machines type. Now, in this case, I'm doing it at the root of vCenter. So it's really going to apply to all virtual machines recognized by this vCenter. But we can also go to an individual virtual machine and add one there. Or we could go to a host and add one there that applies to virtual machines and so on. Now, you're going to want to do this in an organized and careful manner, but you can associate alarms, you can define alarms at many different levels for things that are specific to certain hosts or certain areas. Particularly when we want to start taking action in response to these alarms, then we may find ourselves creating quite a few of them to handle all those special situations and scenarios that come up in our complex production environments. It's for virtual machines, and you'll see that we have an option for specific conditions, which is really performance type data and also specific events. Let's take a look at the events first. So I'm just gonna say monitor for specific events. Then if I go over to the triggers tab, we can actually specify what those events are that we're interested in. Now it's interesting because we can actually specify that a combination of events will trigger an alarm, but any of those events independently won't. So if we're on the triggers tab, I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And you'll see that for all the different events that could occur for a virtual machine, and there's quite a lot of them, and more than what's already defined as being an actual alarm, then we can go in and define them here. So there are already alarms defined, and they go a certain distance. You probably want to modify those alarms to change their notification action and or any other actions you might want them to do. And then it's probably a good idea to go in and create a whole series of additional alarms for notifying you when various things occur we actually really have to set alarms up on very specific conditions. 
for those sorts of things that we've identified as being significant to the operation of the service, we can easily go in and define those types of events that we already know are important parts of our support processes or our integration processes. There's just a ton of things in here to configure. So pick whatever event, and then we can set additional conditions under the advanced options here and actually test that specific fields within that event match specific patterns. So if there's data stores that are on iSCSI compared to Fiber Channel, maybe I've named them somehow with the word iSCSI in them or something like that. And we can go in and say, you know, if it starts with or it ends with a particular value, then we want to trigger the alarm. And again, that can be very useful where I want to create an alarm, for example, that might reinitiate a service or something along those lines. Well, I probably don't want to do that for virtual machines that are on fiber channel storage or NFS storage. We could that way much more closely tailor our alarm responses without necessarily having to write a lot of those types of tests directly into maybe a script that I'm using to repair that condition and so on. You could even take that farther to things like power clients, and you may even be directly using your script to detect these alarm conditions and then take action, or we can just have the alarm take action and run a simple script. If we click over to the reporting tab, we can specify repeats and so on. Because this is just a reasonably simple event, we don't get those options. And if I go over to actions, we can specify when it goes from normal to warning mode and then warning over to alert mode and then alert back to warning and warning back to OK, then what do we want to do at each one of those stages? So if I click add, we can have it send us an email. We can have it send out an SNMP notification trap if you're using an SNMP monitoring system like HP OpenView or something along those lines. We could have it run a command, so we can actually have it just go run something inside the virtual machine. Maybe that's a script. Power on or power off a virtual machine, suspend it, reset it, migrate it, and so on. Now, because these are virtual machine alarms, it's going to know automatically which virtual machine it needs to take that response in. That's pretty straightforward. However, depending on what you write in terms of scripts and so on, these scripts will be run inside the virtual machine, so it's not necessarily something that's going to work the same way as if that script was running on vCenter itself. And we may want to override this. So I could say if it goes from normal to warning, then I would like to be notified. If it goes from warning to alert, I want to be notified. If it's getting better, I want to be notified about that too. And we can have multiple responses if we want as necessary, running multiple commands and so on. If we go back in there, you'll notice as well, we have the option to do performance-based alarms or threshold-based alarms anyway. Back in the alarm settings dialog, and we'll see under alarm type, I've got monitor for specific conditions or states such as CPU usage, power state, and so on. So if we take a look over to the triggers, we can see it's a little bit different now, and we can specify a threshold and a time for it to be considered a warning and also for alerts. So that gives us a pretty good idea of how we can configure alarms and some of the things that we can do. It's going to be up to you to take a look at your environment and look at what's significant. Anything related to network connectivity, data store connectivity, anything related to DRS automation, anything related to HA, that's all really important stuff and you should at least have it notify you even if you're not going to have it take action for you. Now there's a little bit more to configure though. If you've set up email notifications or you've set up SNMP trap notifications, you're going to need to go to the home page of vCenter and inside your vCenter server settings, you're going to need to specify the details for your mail server and also the details for your SNMP host, what community string you want to use, and what trap destination you want to use. If you have a particular monitoring server or set of servers, we can specify where it should send those SNMP traps. So that gives you a good idea of how we can use alarms within vCenter. In other videos, we're going to take a look at all those HA features, DRS features, and other performance features for more information on what to look for there.